Flung hoody foody hoody for the hoody real human voice, not an AI. I'm sorry, yes, I love the Muppets and the Swedish Chef, but I really wanted to see how the guy who puts the captions on the videos handles that. So, let's get started here. Bartenders, what are the stereotypes that come with specific drinks people order? Story 1. Lessie here. I received this in an email with too many forwards to count. In June of 2007. See for yourself if it's still accurate. Bartender psychology. Before you order a drink in public, you should read this. Seven New York City bartenders were asked if they could nail a woman's personality based on what she drinks. Though interviewed separately, they concurred on almost all counts. The results. Drink? Drink. Personality? Casual. Low maintenance. Down to earth. Your approach? Challenger to a game of pool. Drink. Blender drinks. Personality? Flaky. Whiny. Annoying. A pain in the... Your approach? Avoid her. Unless you want to be her cabana boy. Drink. Mixed drinks. Personality. Older. More refined. High maintenance. Has very picky taste. Knows exactly what she wants. Your approach. You won't have to approach her. If she's interested, she'll send you a drink. Drink. Wine. Except white Zinfandel. Personality. Conservative and classy. Sophisticated, yet giggles. Your approach? Tell her you love to travel and spend quiet evenings with friends. Drink. White Zinfandel. Personality? Easy. Thinks she's classy and sophisticated, actually has no clue. Your approach? Make her feel smarter than she is. This should be an easy target. Drink. Shots. Personality. Likes to hang with frat boy pals and looking to get totally wasted and naked. Your approach? Easiest hit in the joint. You have been blessed. Nothing to do but wait. However, be careful not to make her mad. Drink? Tequila. No explanations required. Everyone just knows what happens there. Then there is the male addendum. The deal with guys is, as always, very simple and clear cut. Domestic drink? He's poor and wants to get laid. Imported drink? He likes good drink and wants to get laid. Wine? He's hoping that the wine will give him a sophisticated image to help him get laid. Whiskey? He doesn't give a about anything but getting laid. Tequila? He's thinking he has a chance with the toothless waitress. White Zinfandel? He's gay. Not a bad list there. But this sounds like the kind of joke that used to get handed out on photocopied paper before the internet was invented. Also, do you think it's really funny about the white Zinfandel gay joke? Is it really a punchline anymore when we call being gay something to laugh at? I'm not sure if that really flies anymore. Story 2. I attended bar at a crazy, pretty busy beachfront in Florida for three years. The following stereotypes are based upon my experience, as well as the particular demographics that frequented the establishment. White chicks? Alcohol. Any brand, including well, with seltzer or water and plenty of lime wedges, tequila shots, flavorful shots, oatmeal cookies, strawberry starburst, gummy bear, etc., red and white wine, change for a $20 bill for the cigarette vending machine. Black chicks? Margarita, regular or frozen, with plenty of salt on the glass rim, strawberry daiquiri, pina colada, Miami Vice, half strawberry daiquiri and half pina colada, Long Island Iced Tea, Malibu and Coke, Malibu Bay Breeze, White Zinfandel, not likely to down shots. Note, an issue I often experienced was the request for light ice in the glass, which is no problem. But the customer also wanted the glass filled to the rim. The amount of alcohol I was pouring was the same in either case. And absent ice cubes meant that more mixer, sour mix, soda, or juice would be added to the drink, effectively weakening it which would quite often result in the I can't taste any alcohol in this drink complaint. White dudes? Drink? Lots of it, any brand. Jack and Coke? Alcohol? Any brand. And Red Bull? Fireball shots? Irish car bombs? Etc. Really, nearly any type of shot. Note, an exception to this is the overly tanned, tightly muscled UFC watching crowd. Alcohol and cranberry with lime wedge. Kind of strange, but true. Black dudes? Hennessy and Coke or Red Bull, Remy Martin and Coke, Long Island Iced Tea, Blue Long Island Iced Tea, Grateful Dead, version of Long Island Iced Tea, Grey Goose or Ciroc and Red Bull or Coke. Not really a shot downing type of crowd. Tourists of any ilk, Bahama Mama, Planters Punch, Mai Tai, 
I used the exact same recipe to make all of these cocktails, but no one ever complained. The non-mixologist type bartender's credo, when in doubt, make it red, then send it out, really works. College kids, spring break, anything, everything. This one seems a little more like it's coming from experience. It's not just one or two drinks per type of person. It's sort of like you get a whole family of alcohol or certain types of drinks. The spring break college kids, I totally believe that they will just drink anything that's presented to them. Story three. Yes, I have a note created on the slowest of days saved in the deep reaches of my phone for just this question. What your drink says about you. Alcohol, soda, friend. My friends are ready, but I'm not. Rum and Coke, male. My friends are ready, but I'm not. Gin and tonic. It's good enough for my grandma. Seven and seven. I, or female, my dad was in the war. Tequila and soda. I want to be an Instagram model. Margarita. I want a cocktail, but I don't. V Martini. I'm a fancy wasted. With ice on the side. I'm a cheap wasted, too. G Martini. I only drink farm to table spirits. IPA. I think I have a developed palate. Like drink. This is the only thing in my fridge. Bourbon shot. It's been a rough day. Alcohol shot. It's been a rough month. Tequila shot. I don't work tomorrow. Jaeger shot. I don't work. Cosmopolitan. I binge watch in the city. Manhattan. I binge watch Mad Men. Old fashioned. I want the huge cube to show off. Top old fashioned. I want to impress my date. Chartreuse soda. I make my own bitters. Fernet and Coke. I spent a year in Europe. House Red. You don't have my favorite red, so I'll take the cheapest one. House White. I have to go pick up my Xanax prescription later. Mimosa. Day Wasted is my normal. Bloody Mary. All day wasted is my normal. Alcohol on the rocks. Do you have Stoli? Alcohol and Red Bull. I want to make a lot of decisions today. Stella. What do you have on tap? White Russian. No, I don't want coffee. Lemon drop. I only care about the alcohol when I know what it is. This one reminds me of number one, like it's another one of those photocopied, passed around lists of jokes pre-internet. For some reason, this one seems a little more legitimate than the first one. I gotta admit, when I drank, I did a lot of gin and tonic. But I also put in a lot of lemon and lime, so it was almost kind of like a soda. I don't know where I fit on the list there, but, you know, there you go. Story 4. I bartend on occasion. I don't really stereotype what you order so much as when you order. You need to realize as much as you may think it's first come, first serve, it's not. It's drinks per hour. You want a mojito or anything that takes a bit of time to make? Try not to order it when I have six other people ordering. I will put you to the back of the line. You'll see those six people likely to get their rum and coke, whiskey neat, drink, and Jaeger bombs before I even start on your mojito. My job is to make the most customers happy. If those six people have to wait two minutes while I get out the mint sprigs, muddle them properly, add more lime and sugar, let it soak for a second, muddle again, add the ice and rum, stir, add the club soda, re-stir, garnish, and serve, they're not going to be happy. If you have to wait two minutes while I get all the rest of the easy drinks done, you're not going to be happy. So I can either annoy one person or I can annoy six people. Sorry, man, my job is to sling the most drinks I can. Now, sure, if it's a constant rush, I won't keep bumping you to the back of the line. I'll probably make yours while taking other orders, but you're not going to get my undivided attention if you order a high-maintenance drink during a rush. Story 5. The Nice People Ones who look around the bar really quick to see how busy I am before ordering something that needs to be muddled, blended, requires more than five ingredients. I want to shout for joy when someone is like, I'll have a mojito. Actually, this place is super busy. Just a gin and tonic, thanks. Nuts to the group of ten who all want daiquiris with extra fruit mixed in. A strawberry daiquiri with a handful of blueberries and how dare you forget which one of us specified this during happy hour rush. Edit. Not saying you should never order a fancy drink again. I love mojitos myself. I just mean that it feels wonderful to have someone in the mass of people waving their hands and snapping their fingers at you asking why you haven't made their drink with extra but not 
gently stirred with a slight bow in their direction of France, just say, Hey, you know, maybe I'll just have something simple. No rush. Though, no apologies for people who come into my small dive bar and want a cocktail they found on Pinterest. Story 6. My city has a very fancy and, to be fair, very good gin bar in it, which stocks around 500 gins and has become a huge destination for hipster tourists and gin-obsessed mums. Used to be people coming to my bar would ask for a gin and tonic. Now people coming to my bar ask what gins we have and make me explain every ingredient and the philosophy behind every damn one before deciding. So the stereotype in my city is you're either asking about gin, which means you're a tourist or Instagram nerd, or you're complaining about everyone in front of you asking about gin, in which case you're a local. A few weeks back, a dude was second in line for ten full minutes before the lady in front of him wanted the entire history of East London Batch 2, and he spent the whole time pulling faces at me over her shoulder. Moment he gets to the bar, the only thing he says is, Gin bar has a lot to answer for. Give me a drink. I don't know if this one is so much about the people ordering drinks as it is the establishments. See, this is what happens when you kind of compartmentalize people and then create a business trying to cater just to that person. It feels like a lot of people will gravitate towards being that kind of person. Depending on how annoying or nice that kind of person is, it's probably going to cause some trouble in several communities. Like this guy. Give the man his d drink, he was waiting that long. Story 7. Manhattan? Old fashioned? 40s businessman. Negroni? Hipster 20-something. Cosmo Bellini? 20-year-old girl that asks for something girly. Anything blended. This varies, but they all tend to come off as kind of oblivious to the world around them. Alcohol Cran? Pretty universal. Guinness and Jamo? The Irish, of course. Shandygaff? Shout out to the Brits. Bud Light? Any man that walks in and says, what kind of drink do you have? I gotta be honest, I haven't drank in a long time. Some of these drinks I don't know. I have to look up the pronunciation of them before I voice them. I was really scared when I saw Negroni. And Bellini reminds me of that guy in Kids in the Hall that just wears a towel around his waist. Shandy Gaff sounds like what British people would call miniature golf. As for Bud Light, uh, not every guy is gonna walk in now and say, what kind of drink do you have? Not with that controversy of the campaign they've got going on right now. Story 8. As a bartender that started tending around the turn of the modern cocktail renaissance, I used to care an awful lot about what people ordered. I would serve alcohol sodas with disdain, rum and cokes with a sneer, dirty alcohol martinis shaken so aggressively they would froth. Then... I got over it and realized it's just a job. People drink what they like, and it isn't a big deal what I think. Some people don't have the money to order nice brands, and some people do, and just really enjoy a cheap yellow fizzy drink. Now I make anything and everything with a smile. I try not to think of the stereotypes anymore. It isn't my job to do that. It's my job to smile and serve what the guest wants in a timely manner. Story 9 we turned an outdoor shed into a tiki bar shortly after the smoking ban, Wisconsin. Malibu gave us these little buckets to make fun fruity drinks as a promotional thing. I was 18 but knew the basics of bartending, and three couples came in and asked for Long Island iced teas in those buckets. Of course, I screwed up my alcohol portions because the drink is f straight booze in a bucket, and all three couples went inside to complain to my manager about my drink-making skills and the prices I charged. We gave the buckets away to make sandcastles after that. We also had a bartender who refused to make a Bloody Mary after 4 p.m. and said it was a day drink. Story 10. Any brand-name liquor on the rocks with a splash of soda means it's a person between 55 and 65 with decent money. They usually tip pretty well. If I'm asked about the multi-flavor or mouthfeel of every IPA we have, it's a hipster in their 20s trying to be cool. If they ask for any kind of shooter, at my bar at least, not a college bar, they're 30 or 35, unhappy with their life and wishing to go back to college. Often, they're trying to seem fun, young, and hip to the other people at the bar. I don't know what it is about moms and margaritas, but they go together like PB and J. I gotta admit, I kind of agree with that assessment. What is the deal with older women and margaritas? 
Does the salt around the rim make it a bit more of a interesting drink to drink somehow? Does the brightly colored liquid and the weird shaped glass and the salt in the umbrella just sort of advertise more that, hey, I'm drinking an alcoholic drink? On a girl's night out, do they just want to accessorize and margaritas just sort of look visually pleasing that way? Story 11. From my experience, if you order a Bud Light or Miller Light or Budweiser with a shot of bourbon or whiskey, you probably work a manual labor-intensive job. Most older women want alcohol with water or tonic or soda. Younger women tend to order alcohol with cranberry or sweeter mixed drinks. Younger men tend to order IPAs or craft drinks. I can always tell who just turned 21 due to all the complex sweet shots with fancy names being ordered. Old ladies that want a party usually start with margaritas. Story 12. Long Island iced tea? Let's get messed up fast! Old-fashioned? Either someone who knows their booze really well, or not at all, and they want to look sophisticated. Apple teeny? I'm away from the kids for the weekend. Bush light? Hillbillies and small town folk? Alcohol on the rocks? Someone who has been drinking long enough to enjoy the nasty burn of watered-down alcohol with no mixer. Story 13. I've been a bartender for more than 15 years, and honestly, the biggest correlation I've experienced is with sports fans. Here, baseball fans, drinks, low-maintenance, minimal tips. Football fans, double whiskey sevens at 9 a.m. As fast as possible. Decent tips as it's pure volume and turnover. Soccer fans, Moscow mules, kamikazes, anything with three or more ingredients, unless it's a shot of expensive tequila. High-maintenance customers, but good tips. I realize this isn't universal, but it goes with the fans and teams in my city. Ooh, now we're getting into subsets. Gotta admit, this perspective is unique. I didn't really think about what different uh, sports fans would drink. The question is, how many of these soccer fans are from the United States and how many are from out of this country? It's kind of hard to say. In my lifetime, soccer has gotten a lot more popular in the U.S. Story 14. Pinot Noir. Sideways is my favorite movie. Champagne. I'm trying to impress someone. Or, I'm a rapper. Gewurz Tremonier. Pronounced incorrectly. I think this is a drink. Cabernet Sauvignon. And you actually say, I'll have the Cabernet Sauvignon. And overpronounce Sauvignon. One fancy wine, please. Malbec. I know what tannins are, and I like them. Riesling. I know what tannins are, and I do not like them. Sherry or port. I'm an 80-year-old woman who could kick your... Story 15. From my experience, if you order a Bud Light or Miller Light or Bud... Wait, wait, didn't I read this story before? Yeah, I did. They listed the same story twice. All right, ah, moving on. Story 16. Tom Collins. Just turned 21. What's the cheapest drink you have? No tip. Give me two shots of tequila. Has no idea how many options there are to this request. Requests hypnotic? Adult entertainer of some flavor. Requests a daiquiri? Clearly lost. I work in a country bar. Amaretto and sour? Just turned 22. A group of girls ordering lemon drops? We'll all pay separately with credit cards and not tip. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 17. Used to be a bartender in a pub in London. Typical pub. You're selling a lot of drinks, the odd cider or glass of wine. There was a local gangster type that even the other hard bastards in the pub used to be wary of. Friendly enough guy, but definitely not someone anyone wanted to be on the wrong side of. He drank nothing but bright pink watermelon Bacardi breezers. Taught me not to judge. Story 18. Tended bar at a pan-tropical bistro when I was in graduate school. Naturally, we had a few pre-blended fruity frozen drinks, which were typically served in a hurricane glass, with garnishes. One evening, a very manly man ordered one, but requested that it not be served in a, yeah, there's that F word, I'm not saying that, a fruity glass. Apparently, real men drink their mango mambos in proper old-fashioned glasses. See, this is kind of why I didn't want to make that joke at the very top of story one. There's still too many people that view homosexual activity as less than, like it's less than normal. On the lighter side, it reminds me of that kids in the hall skit, uh, Girl Drink Drunk. 
That skit I thought was funny because it more focused on how outrageous these drinks look. Like they're put in these ridiculously overbearing glasses or coconut halves or a tiki-shaped uh, vessel or something like that. Oh yeah, and the craziest of crazy straws. Story 19. Alcohol soda with a splash of crayon will either be an obnoxious white girl or a slender gay man. IPA drinkers are bearded dads who want to ask 15 questions and try 15 samples. Long Island drinkers are almost always garbage and bad tippers. There is an entire demographic of female drinkers that don't care what it tastes like as long as it's pink or blue. Story 20. Why does it seem like everyone only has one drink order? Sometimes I like to drink. Hazy IPAs are my favorite, but drink is drink. Sometimes I like fruity rum drinks. Hello, rum runner. And sometimes I like something different, like an angry mule. 100% agave silver tequila, lime, jalapeno, ginger drink. Expand your horizons, people. While there is truth in this that we all need variety, I think it's also true that uh, you don't mix drinks if you want to avoid a hangover. There are other things you can do to avoid a hangover. Mainly, though, just stick to one type of drink or one type of alcohol. Story 21. Any variety of Boilermaker. Guaranteed the customer is an alcoholic. I had a guy who would regularly order 22-ounce bottles of some limited-run microbrew. He preferred the drink poured over ice with a shot of alcohol added. He also didn't own a vehicle, unless you count a bicycle as a vehicle. Here's to you, voodoo child. Story 22. I used to work in a bar with an excellent real ale selection. So, of course, we sold more carling than anything else. Always Pillix who would shout at the football while tearing up the car drinks mats that I had to clean at the end of the night. Some would complain that we didn't sell enough real drink, too. Damn. Story 23. If you're an alcohol drinker, and you demand obscure, expensive alcohol for the clean flavor, you're a victim of marketing. You don't like alcohol. You don't like alcohol, you like alcohol, which is fine. But pretending like there's a difference between Grey Goose and Pinnacle is one of the lower aspects of my job. One of the reasons I stopped drinking is I just couldn't get past the taste of most drinks. Maybe it's just because I have more of a sweet tooth. Again, that's the reason why my gin and tonics were always loaded up with lemon and lime. And I hate beer. I don't get why anyone likes beer. Story 24. Question for bartenders. Do you judge people who order soft drinks? I usually end up being the driver, but feel as though I'm getting judged by the staff or customers at the bar for ordering a Coke rather than a drink or something alcoholic. Even more so at a proper club rather than a regular bar. Story 25. Martini. Shaken, not stirred. Idiot who knows nothing about booze and definitely has no idea what they're ordering, and will most likely not like it. That said, I'm pretty tolerant of most drinks orders. People are allowed to like what they like, even if I don't share the same taste. Story 26. Anyone who orders a drink and says, make it strong, means that they aren't going to tip. No, I will not give you free booze. This is how I make my living. I always ask if they want to order and therefore pay for a double. The answer is always no. You can write off, good sir. Story 27. We had a bar nearby that would guess your drink. Basically, the bartender would profile you and try to figure out what you would order. He would write it down on the drink napkin thing and turn it over after you ordered. If he got it wrong, you got a tiny discount. It was good fun. I like that idea. That sounds like a fun place. If they're giving out tiny discounts, he must not guess a lot. Story 28. Long Island Iced Tea. Usually someone who wants to get wasted for cheap is going to complain that the drink is not strong enough. Life pro tip for bartenders. Before serving, fill the straw with tequila. You will never get another complaint about a weak Long Island iced tea. Story 29. When a customer orders a fireball for himself, a coke for his young friend, some BJ shots for the two ladies with their boyfriends across the bar, and two cosmopolitans for their boyfriends, a cool bar fight is about to start. That sounds just a bit too specific. Did that actually happen? Or is this a reference to a movie or a TV show I'm not aware of? And my sympathies for any bartender who gets some guff from the boyfriend because they adopt a unalive-the-messenger type of 
attitude. Story 30. Can you make me something fruity? A.K.A. I'm pure amateur hour. May send this back for being too strong. We'll probably make out with that creepy regular that drinks Bud Light drafts on the dance floor after one cocktail and a woo-woo. Story 31. Hi, can I get a cherry alcohol sour, but like make it for a wuss whose friends made her come out and doesn't like the way alcohol tastes? Does it fit the stereotype of a person who doesn't belong here and should just go home? Because I agree 100%. Story 32. AMF. You're a college kid whose sole purpose is to throw up on yourself by the end of the night and not tip a single bartender. Women that drink bourbon on the rocks have low moral standards. Easy picking, but don't stay too long. Train wreck incoming. Okay, I had to look up what an AMF is. Obviously, I can't pronounce the entire name of the drink. But everything that goes into it? The drink is aptly named. Story 33. Just make me something yummy. An early 20s girl that's going to flirt with me and everyone else in the bar and get carried out by 10 p.m. I'm a bartender, not a chef. Just order a f drink, Tiffany. Story 34. One Caucasian, please. Neckbeard Fedora Dude ordered about ten white Russians from me one night and called them Caucasians every time while chuckling to himself every time he came to the bar. <laughs> Story 35. Obligatory, not a bartender. But once in New York City, I overheard a dude ordering a seven C's. Turns out it's a splash of the first seven things the bartender sees. Yep. Instantly judged as an alcoholic. Story 36. Vegas bombs. Either having a great time and one guy is flexing cash with a bunch of friends will tip well, or bag flexing cash around random people he barely knows will not tip well. I lived in Vegas for a few years. I don't know if I ever heard of Vegas bombs. That sort of implies that there are other bombs. Los Angeles bombs? Palm Springs bombs? Portland bombs? They're probably not the same. Story 37. Pink drink? No, I can't drink this. Too gay. I'm not gay. I work at Harpoon in Boston, and there really still are some people too afraid of being emasculated because of the color of drink they drink. Story 38. If you pull up a drink you found on Pinterest and it has 25 steps and is more pretty than tasty, I can tell you're already a future I want to speak to the manager type of mom. Story 39. I usually go up to the bartender and order a Coke, but make it look like an alcoholic drink. I don't drink. Bartender usually understands my plight. Thank you for letting me fit in. I've never thought of that. I gotta try that out. I don't drink, but I go out to places and people always stare when I order just a Coke. That would be a great way to be able to fit in. If the bartender takes the time to do this so I fit in, I will tip. Story 40. Man, I feel like the compliment to this question is what we're really after. Bartenders, what can we order that doesn't disappoint you and won't make you judge us? Story 41. Not many people talk about wine. Chardonnay? I'm a lady over 35, and I don't like change. Moscato Prosecco? I actually hate wine. Rose? I wish I liked wine. White Zen? Cougar. Story 42. Looks like this has turned into Ask Bartenders What Your Drink Says About You. I like mudslides with amaretto instead of Kahlua because I hate coffee. I'm female. Story 43. They want an expensive cocktail, and when you tell the price, they start arguing with you that it's way too expensive and that they can make it at home for half the price. Well, then make it at home for half the price. You're in a familiar place. You won't get hit on by creepy dudes. And when you pass out, you know you're in a safe place. Sounds like a win-win for you. Story 44. Long Island iced teas rarely get tips and are almost always asked to make it strong. It's nearly an entire cup of liquor. How the hell am I supposed to make it stronger? Story 45. The woman who ordered a lemon drop is the only person to this day who has screamed at me at work. So I'll say that's a drink for high maintenance. Dr Story 46. Guessing from the reactions I get when I order an old-fashioned, people expect those who drink it to either be old or a fan of Mad Men. I'm neither. Story 47. Alcohol Red Bull. Usually a bit of a jerk and on some kind of pharmaceuticals. 
On the bright side, they tip well because they're too off their gourd to care about getting change. Story 48. Alcohol soda. You're on a diet. Margarita? You're a pain in my... Scotch and water? You're over 50 with heart issues. Orange juice? You're gonna tip me a quarter. Story 49. If you order Old Spanish, you probably have some government job and nickname like Cooter Burger that you hate, but don't stand up for yourself about. Story 50. Fireball mixed with soda. Had a bartender tell me at a wedding, Oh, great, you're one of those people. What did he mean? Because I'm still a bar novice. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.